For more, let's cross to uh, Addis Ababa. William Davison is senior analyst at uh, the uh, uh, think tank Crisis Group. Thank you for being with us here on France 24. Thank you for having me, but I'm actually in um, Nairobi. You're actually in Nairobi. Thank you for the correction. Uh, William, uh, first off, uh, there's a bit of a fog of war, it seems, because we're just not getting much information as to whether or not this ground offensive is truly on. What do you know? I think, as you, as you note, um, most of the claims have come from the Tigrayan side. Um, they've been fairly consistent claims, um, but they're not, not too much from the, the federal government side so far. Um, but we should note that there is absolutely no surprise here. Um, there has been very significant mobilization of, of new recruits um, by the federal government and allied regional governments recently. Um, n n no continued uh, rhetoric which suggests that you know, uh, both sides will be seeking um, to gain military advantage here. And then there is the fact that since mid-July, the Tigray forces, um, they launched this um, offensive into Amhara and Afar region. Um, they said they wanted to secure Tigray security by weakening further the Ethiopian federal military. They also have um, an intention to regain territory in western Tigray that Amhara region took over um, at the beginning of the war. Um, and then there is also the issue of the federal blockade um, on humanitarian supplies to Tigray. So the response of Tigray's leadership um, to having its, the aid cut off and the electricity banking telecoms cut off was to say, well, we are going on the offensive to try and break that blockade. Um, that occurred in July and August. We've seen the lull in fighting in September. But really, no surprise at all um, that the federal government and the federal military and allied forces now seem to be launching an offensive to try and dislodge those Tigray forces from the positions that they've taken, especially in Amhara. Yeah, l l let's break it down here and first talk about that. Uh, the, it, it's been for decades that there's been this rivalry between Tigray and, and Amhara, and it's really come to a head in the past year. Yes, that's. I mean, that's 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 one way of looking at it. I think particularly there has been there is this um, now very serious political problem, um, very serious, you know, human, humanitarian human rights issue in in Western Tigray, and also a you know, point of major potential escalation. Now, essentially, what happened there is that um, some Amhara um, entities, politicians, activists, regular people, they claim that Tigray um, and the TPLF, the ruling party, that they sort of annexed uh, what should have been a piece of Amhara into Western Tigray, quite a fertile piece of land that borders Sudan. Now, in the wake of this um, federal intervention to remove Tigray's government in November, um, the Amhara region moved in and took that land. So, yes, it is absolutely an escalation um, of, of that dispute. Um, and indeed, the Amhara-Tigray sort of rivalry between politicians who used to share power in a coalition, that is indeed you know, one part of the, of the, of the political problem here. Um, but there are also other rivalries that, that matter, such as between the Eritrean leader, uh, Zaya Safawerki, and the TPLF leaders, the TPLF leaders and Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. And there are also important structural consider um, considerations about the makeup of Ethiopia's federal state, disagreements over Ethiopia's history and the way forward that also are very much playing a role here. Playing a role, uh, this concept of uh ethnic federalism that uh, is now really under fire. It's under fire in the sense that um, there is a lot of tension between your proponents of um, different brands of, of ethno-nationalism. So in Oromia, the most populous region, for example, which was really the hotbed of protests um, that led to the changes in 2018 that brought Abiy Ahmed to power and saw the TPLF lose a lot of power. Um, there is contestation. There is a different vision there between Oromo nationalist parties um, and politicians and Abiy Ahmed's vision. Abiy Ahmed has created a, a unitary prosperity party rather than the former coalition of regional parties that the TPLF was an integral part of. And of course, you know, the TPLF refused to join um, Abiy Ahmed's prosperity party, becoming the only regional state to be run by an opposition group. Um, and it was those sorts of political differences and the sort of structural tensions they created that have contributed to the outbreak of, of war. And indeed, there is plenty of disagreement in Ethiopia of, about the, you know, the composition of the, of the federation and the extent of autonomy and the role of you know, ethno-linguistic identity um, in state structures um, and in politics in general.
And uh, you you were mentioning uh, that humanitarian blockade, and we know that the row between the Ethiopian government and the United Nations two weeks ago, it didn't happen uh, in a vacuum. What have you been able to piece together in terms of uh, what's actually happening as far as weaponizing hunger? Like everything in this war, it's, it's heavily contested. Um, but what we do know is that you know, when the federal um, government um, installed an interim administration um, in Tigray um, at the end of November, they removed the TPLF government. Sort of from then onwards, there was very little problem um, for aid to get to Tigray um, because the federal government was, was in control. The problem was getting aid to all parts of Tigray um, because there was you know, an armed resistance there, um, and there were sort of Eritrean and Ethiopian checkpoints that prevented that distribution of aid around Tigray. Now, in June, of course, um, after this resurgence by the Tigray forces, the federal military, the federal administration, they left Tigray. And since then, we have seen, you know, we have seen serious problems um, with aid getting to Tigray. Most of the land routes have been closed off, including by the blowing up of bridges. And the one route that aid goes through um, has been a very insufficient supply of trucks carrying food and medicine, et cetera. Um, the United Nations and other humanitarian actors have complained about bureaucratic impediments being put in place by the federal and regional governments. Convoys have been attacked by local militia. Um, and also there is the issue of services. There was some restoration of telecoms and power services to Tigray when that federal administration was in charge. Now that the TPLF administration is in charge, which is classified um, as unconstitutional, the TPLF is classified as a terrorist organization. We have seen the federal government not supply those vital services. And, and, and let me just interrupt you on that, William. We, we've been, we, we just called up the map there. Uh, there is that slender portion of Tigray that is uh, bordering Sudan. What about aid getting through from there? Well, at the moment, um, that is the portion um, that I was referring to as Western Tigray, where the Amhara region has claimed it as its own. It's in administrative and security control, and that's backed up by Eritrean and Ethiopian troops. So essentially, there is no humanitarian corridor through Western Tigray um, into Sudan. But that is indeed a, very much an objective um, of, the, of the Tigray forces. But that does run the risk of very serious escalation, um, including possibly bringing Sudan further into this conflict. Bringing Sudan further into the conflict, uh, gosh, when you think back to uh, to the elections that were held uh, just a few weeks ago uh, at the at the federal level, uh, is Ethiopia at this point in time? What what are the prospects going forward now? Well, obviously, it's a very mixed picture um, for those who are at the center participating in those elections and who are supportive of the government's. Um, policies um, against um, the TPLF and also the rebels in, in Oromia, they see a positive way forward. I think for us at International Crisis Group and other observers, we see a very worrying trajectory. Um, this conflict in Tigray and now outside Tigray is incredibly damaging um, and is leading to um, you know, all sorts of, of, of destabilization. Um, and, it, and it comes amidst a very deteriorating economic situation as well as this growing insurgency in, in Oromia region. Now, because there is no real prospect of a political solution to these conflicts, we run the risk that they're going to continue. Um, and as they continue, the economic situation will worsen. Ethiopia also does have um, deteriorating diplomatic relations with its you know, fairly um, stable, otherwise previously stable Western partners, deteriorating relations with Sudan, um, over, partly over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam dispute and another dispute so there is also a view from the outside that this is a very worrying trajectory that the country is on and could lead to the further destabilization of this you know, vitally important Horn of Africa nation. All right. The lack of interlocutors, a, a big problem. William Davison of Crisis Group, many thanks for speaking with us from Nairobi. Thank you very much.